Hello and today we will be checking out the uh, WooCommerce point of sale order return plugin. So basically uh, this uh, particular plugin uh, facilitates the point of sale user to create refunds in case a customer returns an order or product and uh, as soon as a POS user generates a return for an order the order status alters to the refunded and the inventory of the product of the order is updated automatically. So the uh, basically the POS user can either make a complete refund or refund some of the uh, parts of uh, the cash as per the requirement there. And uh, can you note that uh, if the POS discount was applied, then the order would uh, get refunded completely instead of each of the items there. And this particular WooCommerce point of sale order return plugin is an add-on to the WooCommerce point of sale system. So to use this add-on, you'll have to uh, install the WooCommerce uh, POS system by WebCool first, and then this particular POS order return uh, would uh, be applicable, and you can make use of the same for returning the orders through your point of sale system uh, by the POS uh, managers there that are uh, accessing that particular uh, physical outlet using the POS system itself. So uh, today I'll be showing you the uh, process of the refund there or the uh, or process of the order return and uh, thereafter we'll be uh, seeing the rest of the uh, uh, features itself. So uh, before proceeding further please do uh, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive the latest updates from our end and if you find this particular video helpful then do give it a thumbs up. So first of all let's uh, place an order through the point of sale system for the WooCommerce system and thereafter we'll be uh, showing you how the order return can be done from the uh, fiscal outlet uh, using the POS terminal there by the uh, POS managers who are managing the same. So uh, let me add a few products into the cards and then we'll make a checkout. So uh, I'll be adding this one, this, this and this. So I have four products in the cart and uh, I'll just choose the uh, customer here. Okay. And uh, now let's uh, proceed further to make a payment at the POS. So uh, the total amount is $104.50 and uh, I'll be providing or I'll be tendering uh, 200 pounds there. And let's tap here in the confirm payment and uh, completion of the order. So uh, in a few seconds, we'll see that the order would be placed. And uh, you can see that the order has been successfully placed. We can skip the option uh, to uh, create a uh, or to generate a print invoice. Or we can also tap here in the print invoice button to print the particular invoice itself. So let me show you the invoice as well. So uh, it's just coming up. And here you can see that we have the uh, four products here. And the uh, total is, uh, as you can see, the total is uh, around 300 here. So let me zoom in. All right, the order total is for $200 and 95.5 uh, was written back to the customer who attended the uh, 200 pounds there. So uh, that was how we can place the order. Now let me show you how the uh, POS agent can basically uh, make use of the order return functionality. So for that, he'll have to go to the side panel and navigate to the order section. And here you can see that uh, we have the order number 147. And here the order summary with the four products that we had purchased. And here's the uh, total for uh, $104 there, uh, pounds there uh, actually. And the cash that was tendered by the customer is this and the change that was uh, uh, provided uh, to the uh, customer there. Now from here the uh, POS agent can uh, print the invoice once again or can return this particular order as well. Also kindly note that I've already told you that in case the POS discount is applicable on a particular order then the complete order would be uh, basically returned there and uh, to make a return for this particular order let's tap here in the return button. And you can see that uh, for the order number 147, we have the complete uh, details of the products that were uh, purchased by the customer. So from here, you can uh, basically enter the return quantity that you want to return there. So uh, for example, if you want to uh, return, we can also uh, make a, a return for the partial uh, orders or uh, partial products there within that particular order. Or you can also uh, choose all of the uh, products in that particular order to be returned. So for example, uh, let's go for all of the products here and uh, here we'll be uh, choosing the return quantity as one uh, according to the purchase that was initially made. So here you can see that the quantity 111 for each of the respective products was purchased by the customer. Now if you want to restore the quantity uh, back uh, to the system there, 
then uh, you'll have to check this restore quantity option and that will automatically uh, add up uh, the return quantity back to that particular uh, assignment and here you can see that you can also enter the reason for the refund here and the return amount is for one of four dollars and fifty cents uh, or the pounds there and uh, to make a return just tap here in the return button and that would basically uh, set up the system here so here you can see that the refund has been successfully generated for the order number 147 with the ID 148 now uh, the PSG agent can uh, print the invoice for the same let me show you that and uh, now here you can see that uh, is the uh, receipt for that and here you can see that the uh, refund ID is 148 generated for the order that was uh, uh, initially the order number uh, I'll just show you that so the initial order was uh, 147 and uh, we refunded it uh, and uh, or returned the uh, order uh, items there and uh, the return ID was uh, 148 now uh, after making the return here you can see that uh, still the uh, POS agent can print the invoice uh, there so if I tap here in the print invoice uh, now uh, you'll see that we're able to uh, print the invoice as well as per our requirement and here's the order number 147 so this one is the uh, order receipt uh, at right now so as soon as uh, we have returned there we'll have that particular option to generate the refund receipt uh, to the customer so you can see that pending payment to processing then processing to complete uh, at the POS end now the order status has changed uh, from complete to refunded and here under the sales history for the order 147 you can see that uh, uh, right now the uh, what we say as the cost of this particular order is being shown as uh, 0, 0.00 pounds because 104.50 pounds were written back to the customer uh, who uh, returned his order itself at the POS uh, store itself so here after the return you can see that the uh, uh, what we say as uh, the the uh, price of the respective order uh, that has been now updated here so now you can see that after updation it has gone to 0.00 uh, pounds there the actual order that was placed was for uh, 104.50 pounds and after generating the return there now it, the price for the same has been updated here within the sales uh, history that is accessible to the respective uh, point of sale manager or the uh, agent there now let me take you to the admin backend panel and we'll be checking the outlet list and they will be editing the outlet and then we can view the inventories uh, for the products there uh, that have been updated so for example uh, uh, let me show you that so let me place one order again and uh, in the meantime let me open the backend for this as well so uh, let me go back uh, to home and let me add the product one two three and four and uh, here I'll just make the payment here uh, for the same and let's confirm the payment and generate the invoice so these uh, quantities would be deducted from the outlet there for each of the respective products the quantity would uh, decrease so we have purchased one 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 for all of these four products so I'll just uh, skip this uh, for the time being for the particular order and now if I go to the orders section here we have the order 149 with these uh, four units and now let's uh, go to the admin backend panel so I'll be logging into the uh, WooCommerce uh, platform-based uh, web store backend panel. I'll access that. Then we'll be navigating to uh, point of sale uh, section and then to outlets. So we'll have to check the outlets uh, where exactly these uh, products were purchased from. So, uh, so uh, now uh, I'm at one of the outlets and I've edited the uh, one of the outlets there. And I've navigated to the manage product section for that particular outlet so here we can see the uh, products are there the POS status is enabled and here we have the assigned POS stock now uh, when for example if these four products that you can see will album the logo the premium quality whenever this particular product uh, is sold out from the POS uh, terminal then the assigned POS stock would reduce so right now you can see that uh, for the premium quality too, uh, the assigned POS stock is uh, hundred so if I go back to my section here and uh, if I uh, place an order for the same so uh, premium quality 2 and let me tap here on the pay uh, we'll uh, choose the amount tendered we'll confirm the payment and uh, thereafter uh, the order would uh, 
or the quantity of this particular product from that uh, respective uh, uh, POS uh, terminal would reduce. So if we go back now to the admin panel for this uh, premium quality too, if I refresh this particular page. So now after placing the order for the premium quality too, you can see that the assigned POS stock has uh, decreased to 95. Uh, let me place one more order for the same product. So let's go to the uh, POS order section and here I'll go to the home and here we'll be choosing the premium quality as well. So right now the stock uh, for the POS is uh, uh, 95 there. So now after the confirmation here, if we go back uh, to that particular one and if I refresh this page, it would uh, the assigned stock would uh, reduce to 94. So let me refresh the page once and uh, after that you can see that now the assigned POS stock is 94 uh, and here you can see that uh, the product was purchased and the quantity got uh, a decrease or the assigned POS stock uh, got decreased here. Now this would again increase in the case of order return. So let me show you that. So let's go to the uh, order section. Here's our order for premium quality. Now here I can tap here on the return button. Now the returns can be made if the product is faulty or any other situations there. So I'll choose the uh, product within the order to return. I'll increase uh, or set the return quantity according to the quantity that was purchased. And here you need to check this uh, restore quantity option. And then you'll have to tap here on the return button and the quantity would uh, again be restored there. So now you can generate the print invoice for the return there. Uh, or you can skip that as well. Now let's go back. So now if I refresh this particular uh, product uh, for the respective uh, POS terminal, it would uh, come to 95. So now you can see that the assigned POS stock is again 95 here for that particular product. So that's how the uh, order return uh, plugin for the WooCommerce platform based web stores works. So you'll have to have the POS sale initially and then you can uh, add this uh, particular uh, POS order return plugin uh, for the same and can make use of the same at the POS terminals to make a refund uh, there and uh, you can generate the refund uh, invoice as well as you'll be able to uh, what we say as you'll be able to return back the uh, product quantity within the uh, assigned POS stock for that respective uh, POS outlet that is being managed by one of the uh, one of your uh, POS uh, sales agents or the POS managers there. Now let's check the uh, uh, what we say as the workflow at the admin end. So uh, for that, I'll just take you to the back end and from here, we'll have to navigate through the POS orders. So uh, all of the orders that have been placed through the various uh, POS terminals, they are, they'll be available here. So here we have the uh, order number 152 that is refunded right now that we just did uh, for the Washington outlet. Before that, uh, we had placed uh, the same order at the uh, order number uh, 151 and the quantity was one and the status was complete for 22 pounds there. And after the uh, refund there, now uh, the admin can find the details of the refunded uh, amount as well. That was uh, the order that was refunded by the POS terminal agent. So here we can see the details as well, the status as refunded. Uh, here's the name of the product. And here we have the uh, quantity returned, the total that was returned, uh, tax if any returned. And then we have the paid by customer details refunded 22 uh, pounds there and now the net total for that uh, this particular order or the refund order is zero uh, pounds also if i now go back to the orders section and check the order that we refunded and if i try and tap here on the refund button so as we've returned it right now you don't have that checkbox to ch check this particular uh, product within that particular order and here you can see the returned quantity is returned and uh, you can see a note that the return was done uh, with the name of the POS agent as well and the uh, total amount that was refunded was uh, 22 pounds by the POS agent so that's how easily you can uh, uh, make the order returns there at your physical outlets using the POS terminal uh, there and that's what that was much about the uh, plugin itself uh, that's the uh, WooCommerce point of sale order return plugin and I hope it helped you out in understanding the flow of the same. If you still have any questions, queries or suggestions, then kindly reach back to us at support at the or you can reach us uh, by creating a ticket at webcool.uvitis.com. You can also contact us through www.webcool.com forward slash contacts. And if you like this video, then do give it a thumbs up. 
And lastly, thanks for watching this particular video and have a great day ahead.